Bulmic Heating and Electrocution. So one property of a current when it's flowing through material is that uh, the electrons uh, tend to randomly uh, strike atoms in the material and that resulting uh, energy is transferred into the material and heats it up. So uh, this is known as ohmic heating by an electric current. And we see that in toasters and in this little scene from uh, Hellboy, we see Hellboy fighting a monster in the subway and he's going to use the high voltage electric current to uh, create ohmic heating in the monster and it bursts into flames. Of course, Hellboy is not affected because he's uh, fireproof. Now, the rate at which uh, heating occurs uh, in um, ohmic heating depends on the voltage and on the resistance. And so the rate at which energy is delivered is known as the power. Uh, and the electric power uh, for a given voltage will go up as the resistance uh, decreases or if we hold the resistance fixed and increase the voltage, then the electric power uh, goes up very quickly since uh, the rate of heating uh, goes as the square of the voltage. So if we double the voltage, uh, the rate of heating goes up by a factor of four. Now, here's an example of using uh, an electric current, uh, which is passing through this hot dog, so those two connectors are connected to uh, the wall, and you see there's a steam coming out of the ends of the hot dog. You hear that uh, steam whistling out. So, so we have an electric current passing through the hot dog. That's just myself standing uh, behind it. And I think now you see very clearly the steam coming out of the, of the hot dog. Now here's another example using the same uh, apparatus, but now we place a pickle in between the uh, connections. So see there's the uh, plug and we plug it in. This is, uh, looks like product placement. Uh, it's really not. Okay, so you see the steam coming out of the pickle and an interesting uh, light show that's uh, produced from one end of the pickle as the electric current is passing through. This is uh, very similar to a uh, sodium lamp, the, the kind you might see in uh, parking lots. Uh, here's another example of ohmic heating. In this case, we have a high voltage between the connectors at the bottom that creates a spark and the spark rises and it's rising because that ohmic heating uh, makes the air hot as the air uh, the hot air is buoyant and so uh, the spark rises with the um, rising hot air uh, from uh, buoyancy. Now, uh, an, ex an important example of electric current is the nervous system in the body. So animals have a nervous system and that nervous system operates by small electric currents that activate the contraction and relaxation of muscles. This was discovered in some of the early experiments with electricity by Alessandro Volta, who found that if he just uh, connected a battery to a dead frog, he got um, a reaction from the muscles of the frog. And uh, this effect of that um, uh, electric current causes um, uh, twitching of uh, muscles is, is appears in many uh, cartoons. Here's a, an example from Presto. So you see the um, uncontrolled twitching of the uh, magician when his hand is uh, stuck in the electric circuit. If you, uh, if you look very carefully, you notice there's a Jacob's Ladder going up the uh, uh, hair of the uh, magician. Now, here's another example of uh, electric shock to the body. Um, 
This is from uh, Sherlock Holmes. Now, uh, you should realize that electric shock does not exert a force. So that uh, scene is uh, rather unrealistic. Uh, it does cause uh, muscles to uh, contract, uh, but it does not um, cause a force to uh, be having someone thrown back. Now, if there was some kind of uh, repulsive force, uh, you should remember that there would be a recoil uh, due to the principle of uh, action uh, reaction. Now, uh, having talked about Omikidin, you might wonder if that is the cause of death uh, by electric shock, um, known as electrocution. Uh, it turns out that typically Omikidin is not uh, the cause of death. Uh, rather, the electric current uh, usually uh, is fatal. If it's fatal, it's due to a disruption of the body's uh, electrical nervous system. So the uh, most dangerous uh, part of the uh, having a current passing through the body is if it disrupts the electrical signal, which contracts and relaxes the uh, heart muscle. So the heart muscle uh, is controlled by an internal pacemaker, and of course that has to operate uh, constantly, even when we're asleep, since uh, if the heart doesn't pump, um, not having blood uh, traveling to the brain is causes permanent damage in a matter of minutes. Now, uh, the damaging effects of electric shock are a result of the current uh, passing through the body. So. Um, if there is a certain voltage and a certain resistance, we're going to have a certain amount of current. And the more current, the more dangerous um, this electric shock will be to the body. So a uh, current of uh, one thousandth of an amp or a milliamp uh, can be felt, and a few times greater than that, it's uh, painful, and a um, few times greater than that, about 15 milliamps, uh, you start to lose muscle control. And if it's uh, more than that, and if it's passing through the heart, it's probably going to cause a disruption of the heart muscle. Now, if you remember uh, Ohm's law from another uh, tutorial, you realize that the amount of current uh, goes up uh, as the resistance goes down. So uh, dry skin has a high resistance so we're somewhat protected, but uh, when skin is wet, the resistance drops by uh, as much as a factor of a thousand. And so um, being wet and in contact with electricity is much more dangerous than when uh, the skin is dry. Now, uh, electric current is not necessarily um, fatal. In fact, uh, if you have a ventricular, ventricular fibrillation, uh, which is the uncoordinated, uncoordinated contraction of the heart muscle. So if the um, heart uh, starts con contracting in an irregular fashion, uh, this um, irregularity can quickly degenerate into an actual um, stopping of the electrical activity of, of the heart, um, which is known as flatlining. And if that happens, then uh, death could occur in a matter of minutes. So uh, these uh, defibrillators uh, are devices that deliver an electric current uh, through the heart in an attempt to uh, restart the uh, heart's natural uh, pacemaker. And uh, the use of electricity for uh, bringing a corpse uh, to life uh, appears in the classic uh, film uh, Frankenstein from 1931. And it's interesting that the electricity appears in this film in that uh, it was not mentioned in the original book uh, Frankenstein, which was written in uh, 1818. And uh, defibrillators were not invented until uh, 1947. And uh, nevertheless, it was known that there was a connection between electricity and uh, the body's uh, functions. So perhaps it's not so surprising that it appears in the film. 
So, in uh, summary, uh, electrical current produces ohmic heating. The rate at which heat is delivered, uh, which is known as the power, uh, that power in ohmic heating increases as the voltage goes up and as the resistance goes down. Uh, the nervous system uses electrical signals to activate muscles, including the heart. Electrocution typically occurs due to a fatal disruption of the body's nervous system caused by a large current, um, and it's uh, not due to ohmic heating. And electric current can also restart uh, the heart's uh, pacemaker circuit uh, if it has stopped. Uh, of course, this is uh, a lot of uh, biology involved in um, especially the second part, but it's interesting to see how um, electrical phenomena uh, corresponds to uh, things happening with characters, because often uh, this type of effects animation is used to drive a plot point as it affects a character.